Welcome back viewers to another episode of Mechlay Playground, where today we'll be making silica supported polyphosphoric acid. Now this is an, ama is an amazing catalyst because it has one of the highest concentrations, if not the highest concentration of free acidic protons. This ability allows it to do tremendous things, such as acylations, esterifications, alkylations, isomerizations, transalkylations, condensations, cyclizations, and a whole host of other reactions. I would dare say this reaction, this catalyst, is better than aluminosilicate zeolites because it's easier to make and it's more acidic. So today, I'll show you how to do it. The materials you'll need are phosphoric acid, silica, a hot plate that can go up to 716 degrees with a magnetic stirrer, glassware, and finally, an old can. The first thing we need is 60 milliliters of phosphoric acid. The next thing we're gonna do is wrap our phosphoric acid in a nice aluminum foil sleeve. This will retain heat and allow it to heat up faster. And then we're going to place it into our can Cover it lightly, that way there's still some airflow. And then we're going to heat it up to the max. And we're gonna keep it like this for 24 hours. And we're gonna see how much it condenses. 24 hours later, let's see how our phosphoric acid looks like. As you can see, it's quite condensed. It's taken on a kind of an amber peachy color. It's lower than the 50 millimeter mark, which shows that we did have some condensation happen. And um, we now have polyphosphoric acid, but we're not done yet. We still need to add silica. To start, we're gonna put in our magnetic stirrer. Upon realizing that my syrupy polyphosphoric acid solution is way too thick, we're gonna to have to do this manually because the magnetic stir won't stir through that thickness. So, while we're swirling, we're gonna start adding just a little bit of this stuff. Yeah, I could already feel the thickening. And by the way, it doesn't have to be totally dissolved in it because the silica supported phosphoric acid is it's not supposed to be integrated in the phosphate structure, but it's just supposed to be like a platform for the polyphosphoric acid to do its thing without getting um, solvated by reagents if you're going to be using this for a catalyst. After some time, as you can see, our phosphoric acid is kind of like this gloopy, almost gelatinous thing. It's getting more solid by the minute. Now, it's still not solid yet, as it should be according to literature, but we're getting pretty darn close. So, we're going to add some more silica. And we're going to continue stirring. After adding 100 grams of silica, which is roughly the same amount of phosphoric acid we used, our product is very grainy and flowery, almost like a biscuit mix. And you can see the granules. Let's see if I can pick one up. See, it's kind of, it's not sticky. It's not, it's not sticky anymore. There's no more phosphor, or there is phosphoric acid, but it's not effective because it's all integrated with the silica. Look, you can shape it, mold it and stuff. As you can see, it's quite powdery, and we're just going to process this, make sure it's contained. Look how fluffy it is, very fluffy. And 
Now this silica supported polyphosphoric acid is known as a green catalyst. It doesn't use poisonous metals like aluminum chloride or ferric chloride or any of those other hard salts, especially the chromium and manganese. Also, it's very hard to poison this catalyst, meaning it's very hard for reactants and solvents to be integrated into this and you lose your catalytic ability versus palladium on carbon, which can be very easily poisoned and many of those other catalysts that use noble metals. And yeah, just like that, we made silica-supported polyphosphoric acid.